where the trumpets play their happy sounds. The stranger word of life will pour down onto us all. August 13th, 2003, Tree of Heaven. In the late 90s, there was a local TV station in Pennsylvania. It would air a now classified documentary series. The documentary was aimed at children based in the local woodland, focusing on plants and animals. The host, who was also the narrator for the show, would talk about the wonders of nature, the dangers of nature, and most importantly, how to protect yourself from nature itself. But in early 2001, the show would be taken off air due to the host passing away. And in 2003, something weird would happen. On August 13th, 2003, the show would randomly start a rerun, starting with the 13th episode. These following audio recordings show the beginning segments of the episode. The footage used is from multiple episodes in the series, and specific episodes 3, 6, 8, 10, and 13. We also get a name of the company behind the series, Epperta Branch, in an already reserved message. Good morning, bushwhackers. Today we're venturing into the heart of the forest to find a plant that's as beautiful as it is deceptive. Poison oak. We all know about it, and here in Pennsylvania, it's not as common, but still something to look out for. And here on we aim to uncover all the wonderful secrets that nature has to offer, no matter how minuscule or gigantic. So let's get going, shall we? Found primarily in deep North American woodlands, poison oak has many different names and places of origin, also referred to as the Tree of Heaven. Imagine that. In China and Taiwan, one of these invasive species made its way to America in the 1700s and took its ground here boldly. As many of us know, it's infamous. During the audio recordings, the narrator would talk about a tree named the Poison Oak. He briefly goes over its history, explaining its many different origins and different names. The narrator mentions one of the many different names the tree goes by, the Tree of Heaven. That name is given to the tree from China and Taiwan. He then just starts to go over the history of the Tree of Heaven and how it made its way to America in the 1700s. We then get a message letting people know that the footage we are about to see has been heavily edited, muffled, reversed, and dampened, and even shortened for our safety. It also warns us for maximum safety to wear blue light glasses and to insert our earplugs. The broadcast then gets hijacked. A man with what seems to be a red melted face appears on the screen and speaks to the viewers with a very unsettling voice. As this thing continues to talk, flashes from inside hospital rooms and other disturbing things flash on the screen. It seems to be watching over these people in the rooms. Now, for our safety, the clip has been heavily edited, with the audio being reversed, but when on reversed, there is a message. Now, the first part of the clip is actually obscured to not give away the full meaning, missing only a couple words. The very memory of my face will cause a manifestation of my being in the future. You will be asleep in bed. I will be there and watch over you. When you wake, you will not be able to move any part of you. When the doctors eventually find you, they will not see me, but you will, and I'll see you too, forever. I'll see you. The significance of this message will come along later. Along with the name for the broadcast, we also get a name for the thing we saw on the screen. 
broadcast 813 and the thing we saw on the screen being Fen228. The broadcast is viewed by 530 people in southern Pennsylvania, leaving many disturbed and unsettled. Non-English speakers claim that they can understand every single word of it, despite it being in English. Fen 228's presence caused many to feel extreme paranoia and anxiety, but along with that, many would also experience something much worse. Many people reported that they could not get this face out of their minds, with some hearing its voice days after first watching it, with one victim even claiming the face was living in his brain and feeding on his spine. Someone else also reported hearing trumpets playing in their ears before falling asleep. This is only the beginning of their suffering, as things will get much worse. The Great Northeast Blackout of 2003, August 14, 2003. After the hijacked broadcast frequencies were detected by the TV station's troubleshooters, the NERC was given orders by the Efferata branch, the company behind the documentary series, to have all the power grids local to the state of Pennsylvania disabled by 4 p.m. to prevent public knowledge of broadcast 813. This would be the reason behind the Great Northeast Blackout of 2003, where 50 million people along Northeast US and Southern Canada suffered the worst blackout ever recorded in history, from August 14th to August 15th, 2003. During this time, all traces of broadcast 813 were collected and seemingly wiped from existence by the Afrata branch. These included news articles, internet posts, recordings, and much more. The cause of the blackout was covered up from public knowledge, claiming to be a combination of human mistakes and the result of trees falling onto sagging power lines in Ohio aftermath. About 12 days after the broadcast, a extreme influx of locked-in syndrome would occur. Locked-in syndrome, also known as LIS for short, is a medical condition in where Damage in the brainstem causes people to be conscious, but have whole body sensory loss except for their hearing. They become unable to move any parts of their bodies except for vertical eye movements and blinking. This makes people suffering with this to be completely dependent on help with all daily activities of life. This affected 509 people living in Pennsylvania. This outbreak would cause the US Department of Health to get involved starting a governmental investigation. They would interview over 60 victims using Morse code since they could not communicate due to their condition. They would soon find out that the one thing all these patients had in common would be that they were all home the day broadcast 813 would air, Wednesday, August 13th, 2003. These interviews would only lead to more questions. Many of these interviews would be terminated due to them being ineffective but some would be archived. Late into the investigation, the Efron branch gets word of an odd case. The victim in this case is that of an elderly man who would like to remain anonymous, going underneath the alias Job Zepparini. Zepparini was a war veteran who was fluent in speaking in Morse code, which made him a potential interviewee as soon as the investigation started. A extremely unsettling photo was taken in Zamperini's backyard by his grandson, which led to his family being convinced that his house was haunted, which in return, they would contact a local priest to have his house blessed. This was the photo taken by the grandson. The elderly man would claim something horrible and unholy was with him, and would hurt him and others if he described what it was and the messages he would receive from it. The elderly man would be interviewed by a man named T. Gomez. In this interview, Zamperini is seen laying in his bed near a window, being asked several questions by Gomez, with Zamperini communicating via Morse code. Hello, Mr. I'm Officer Gomez. I hope you're doing well today. Do you mind if I ask you a few questions regarding your condition? and possibly um, unholiness within your home that your family had mentioned. Okay, first and uh, foremost, did you notice any onset symptoms before you lost complete mobility of your body? Face, huh? Hmm. 
When did you begin seeing this face? Interesting. Many of the people who have seen the broadcast that you saw on August the 13th described having vivid and upsetting hallucinations. Do you think this is something your brain has created? Can you please describe this face to me? Hmm. I, uh, I still don't see it. Have you been having any hallucination aside from the face? I'm sorry to hear that. Are these screams constant? Thank you. You shedding light on this is helping more than you know. The interview suddenly ends, and Fen slowly appears in the window before fully taking over the screen. We get a message on the screen that reads, Wonderful day, the miracle of birth, a fetal fanfare, with Japanese text on the bottom, which, when translated, reads, Fear the one and only Watanabe bird. <laughs> Watanabe was an imperial Japanese soldier and war criminal being considered one due to his mistreating of prisoners during World War II. His prisoners would come up with a nickname to talk about Watanabe without getting beaten. That name was Bird. As for a direct connection to Finn, I don't think it suggests that Watanabe is Finn, but more so Finn is personally taking on the alias due to greater plans that we don't fully understand. But I have theorized my own possible reasoning behind this. While Watanabe would physically keep prisoners, it seems Fen is keeping people prisoners of their own bodies, with him constantly watching over them and telling them to not describe anything about what they're experiencing and hearing. During the clip, the camera pans down to what seems to be this thing's intestines, but it gives off this feeling that these are all the people that he's tormenting trapped inside of him. You can hear what seems to be panic breathing given all this context. I think it's safe to assume that Fen is just more so taking on the alias and is not directly Watanabe himself. We also seem to get a vague explanation behind the screaming voices and the trumpets. Whenever the sky opens up, trumpets will play and the laughter of thousands are heard. I'm assuming the sky opening up must refer to some sort of otherworldly dimension opening up, and the laughter of thousands are the people Fen is currently tormenting, with the sounds of the trumpets being used to suggest that there is something more to come. This is going to be the end of the video, as this is all I could really understand in this part due to all the distortion. Either way, this has been an extremely interesting series. And I hope to see more, as its ending leaves us with so much more to be explained. This was the Bored One Phenomenon, and don't forget